host to today talk about my work. Um, and I'm really bad in talking. And I don't like to talk about myself. So I let my mission speak for me. And speak for my experience that uh, was very, very strong and drove me to do those things. And that was experience of violence that we don't usually talk about in our world. And experience of abuse. And I just want the machine to experience and to show it to you. Uh, to me. Um, I think machines are much more expressive than any other work. So let them speak.
Yeah. No. Uh, well, I heard a little bit through the microphone. Did other people hear what uh, Ewa said through the microphone? By the way, I'm uh, uh, Nikki Osman, part of uh, Sonic X curatorial team. This is Ewa Juska. And uh, Ewa is uh, originally from uh, Poland, um, based in London since six years. And. Uh, well, I, kind of, I think you kind of guessed, she's an electronic noise artist and the instruments builder. So she's coming from the do-it-yourself scene and uh, the hacking spaces in, uh, in London. Um, she studied, uh, uh, she has a BA, BA in sound arts from London College of Communication. And uh, she's now pursuing a master in computational arts in, uh, at Goldsmiths. Um, so do you have a mic uh, that is fully functioning. Hello? Yeah. yeah. Hello. So can you tell me a bit uh, uh, what is your setup? Uh, okay. We have it on the camera here so people can see. Can okay. you explain to me a little bit okay. uh, the instruments that you've built? Okay, well, it's nothing really extremely complicated and most of that stuff uh, worked out through making mistakes and not knowing what I'm doing, which is most of the time. Um, it's, yeah, it's making lots of noise, which is, I guess, good for me, at least. <laughs> don't know if for other people. But, um, yeah, I have different devices. Um, I have, like, this box with um, light-dependent resistors. So the light was, basically, the sound was going to the light, and then light was feedbacking with the sound. And there was some built-in uh, little effects so you could control the delay. I have some homemade drone machine in Tupperware, which is, sometimes it's working, sometimes it's not. So it's very fragile. Um, yeah, I have, uh, I have yeah, different things that didn't work. For example, this, this is a sequencer um, that didn't really work and looks kind of messy inside. Um, yeah, I think that's, I like the process the most. That's, my work is really based on process, so it's not really about the final effect, but the way I go to those places. Um, but really, the, I learned more, the most from m making workshops and talking to people, because I think that's kind of the most important thing, really, to interact with other people. Um, yeah. Because I forgot to tell that uh, also a main part of your profession is that you teach. You teach mm -hmm. electronics at the uh, uh, school. Um, yeah. So. How would you say this balance is between, and how, what is, uh, how is the teaching of importance for your work? Um, let me just, this is distracting me, sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, just a second. 
off? Okay, great. Yes. Okay, that's better. Um, yeah, as I said, I think I don't, I don't really, wouldn't like to call myself a teacher, really, because it's just more about being around people and um, exchanging knowledge. That's how I see it. And that's how, well, DIY electronics thing is really about, it's not about hierarchy or, yeah, I know more, you know less. It's just like people getting together and building lots of crazy stuff. <laughs> how did you start in this do-it-yourself uh, scene <coughs> and, and how did you, did it start yeah. in London? Yeah, it started in London. Um, as I said at the beginning, I went through some not good time in my life and I had to decide if I'm going to lay down in bed and do nothing or actually do something about it. So I just locked myself in and decided I'm going to build stuff and express myself <laughs> through it. <laughs> So because you were you were studying sound art, but this yeah. you explained to me before that this was not where you yeah, were yeah, doing yeah, yeah. this. Uh, well, the, the uh, course I did, uh, we did we had electronics there. We had some courses, uh, module, but it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't so great. Yeah. So, so you I were mean, lots reading of, lots books, of, lots of yeah, lots of lots of research really. And you were talking about some things are not working. This this yeah. uh, this principle of error. It's it's also yeah, important that's, for that's, you. Yeah, that's that's kind of the main thing really. It's it's all. All those noises you could hear, uh, most of them are not really wanted. Yeah. So um, I would like to have some structure behind it, but there's lots of stuff that I can't control, which is a kind of, I think it's the most important thing. Yeah. This feeling of not being able to control. Yeah. 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 Kind of half half. Yeah. <laughs> and um, why did you decide to go into uh, computational arts? Because this um, is all very analog. Yeah. Uh, not sure if that was such a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a very good coder, <laughs> but uh, to be honest, because of work, like who's gonna pay me to, you know, to do this? And I, I need to know, I need to know, have some skills in programming in order to survive in London. So this morning we <laughs> talked a bit that sometimes people feel pressure to yeah. go as an artist into a PhD. You felt yeah. maybe a bit pressure to pursue a master in in something that is a official it's, skill. You yeah, know, I, I would I would like to know some actual skills. So I guess that was the reason rather than talking about it, I would rather, rather do it. But I'm definitely more interested in critical theory and questioning why those things do and what, what they affect on people and on me, really. And that's, sorry to interrupt you, that's also another thing that I find uh, quite um, problematic in arts, that not much stuff is really affective, uh, like physically affective or affective. It's, um, yeah, it's maybe conceptual and, and kind of digital domain, but it's, yeah, I, I like things that I can experience. Is Not this where, talk because it. you talk about materiality, the yeah. tactile um, yeah. aspect of it, can you explain a bit? Because in the in the concept of circuit bending, of course, you have to yeah. touch in order to change. Yeah. Can you maybe explain a little bit what? Yeah, I mean, uh, as I as I said before, so it's about process of doing those things, um, which is very very physical because uh, it's just a table full of electronics and. You have to figure out where things go. But also performance for me is very important because it's uh, kind of very personal uh, for me, yeah. And physical. Yeah. So, yeah. Can you maybe explain a bit how hey, you have to acquire those skills? Then you uh, start, it's a process-based uh, yeah. uh, process. And um, where, from where does it go into a performance, yeah? the, the, the outcome, when you have the output? How, how does this work for you? Well, what do you mean from... Well, you start with a performance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess from exploration of what those things can do, from, yeah, from reading about it also. Um, yeah, but... So it's half machines talking, half me talking, really. There's, I guess, some kind of conversation in between. Yeah. Can you maybe say a bit what, what uh, those books, the critical theory, what is it mm -hmm. that inspires you or what were the things that you read that yeah. tickled well, you? Yeah, well, I'm very interested in media archaeology. Um, so people like Jussi Parika find it interesting. But also he also talks about materiality uh, in, his, in his theory. Yeah, and um, this guy, is, what's his name, Sigrid Zielinski. Zielinski. Big time the media. Uh, very interesting also. Yeah. Uh, what are the aspects that... Well, it's, um, he talks about history of media, which is I found very interesting, from Renaissance uh, to more like first first audio visual synthesizers and stuff like that. And it's yeah, it's I found it very interesting. Uh, 
rather than sitting in front of the computer and writing code, thinking what is what this code actually mean and what's behind it. In that way, that makes sense? I don't know if I'm making sense. For me, it makes <laughs> sense. Uh, maybe it's also good to have some questions from the audience. Um, is there a question for Eva? Maybe about her method or uh, the way the machine is working? Anything goes? I don't see really, but... Ah, here in the front. I'll give you a microphone so everybody can hear. I just wonder, how is the plant work? Is that oh. plant hacked into the circuit? Yeah, it's very, very, very simple. Um, it's just, I'm using it as a potentiometer, as a resistor. So it's just um, controlling an oscillator and a pitch. Um, yeah. Cool. That's, that's very simple. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Um, <laughs> You gave a workshop, uh, you, you already said uh, giving workshops is uh, basically a main part of your uh, work and what you like to do. Um, it was about the voice order, can you explain oh, yeah. a bit? Actually I used it today also. It's, uh, yeah, it's again, it's an extremely simple circuit, maybe I will show it. Maybe we can follow it with the camera. Mm. It's in front of the mixer, yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's the one, here we go. Um, yeah, it's like this size. So yeah, it's nothing complex. It's just a small microphone that um, is an input for this delay chip that I kind of hacked and simplified. And it's making weird sounds, which I like. And you use a quote by William Burroughs? Can you maybe... Uh, uh, yeah, well, that was... I do was you know the quote to, by heart? Or? I, was, I was trying to make it interesting <laughs> and write like a concept for it. But um, I think, yeah, it's just a very good circuit also for the beginners in electronics to to um, get introduced to what's the digital sound, what's analog, and how do we combine it, how do you convert digital to analog, and just explaining those things. Um, yeah, and it's fun to play with, because it doesn't sound like your voice. It sounds weird. <laughs> and do you think uh, this digital domain, also with the computational art, do you think it will enter your work at a certain point? Mm, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I like this analog. Um, maybe in kind of conceptual way more um, but no in practical way I like I like this mess I don't want to replace it with a computer <laughs> yeah. there's a question there wait for the mic please okay. yeah thanks hello hello yeah. hi, hi. Uh, I was wondering what is the last thing you added to your current setup and why What's the last thing I added? All oh, right, okay. Ba -boom. The plant. <laughs> and why? Just to make it look more cool. <laughs> well, that's an answer. Thank you. I have one more question. You talk about in your in your bio. You talk about the varied range of micro and macro mm. environments. Can you mm. elaborate a bit on this? Um, well, I think. You know, the stuff I was doing before with radios, it's also extremely uh, easy and simple circuit. Um, and it looks like this. Um, and yeah, so I could send through FM waves signal from the mixer to the radios. So I guess I like the idea of exploring things that are invisible um, and also this idea of sound to light. Is, I guess it goes in the same direction. Um, I'm not very eloquent, I have to admit, <laughs> right now especially, but yeah, um, I don't know if I explain it, but uh, I mean electronics or logic gates, uh, chips, this is all small environment that we really don't know about, and it's nice to open it and think about how things work inside them, I guess. And uh, now with these uh, new uh, equipments where everything has this blob of plastic on top of it, mm -hmm. it's, it's harder for, for the circuit bender mm -hmm. to hack it. How do you, do you, you build your own instrument, but you also use yeah, the hacking of chips. How do you, how do you see this? With new, do you think you will stick to these old uh, simple circuits or uh, uh, do you think you will also yeah. go into these digital? Well, I think, um, I think now I'm more about money. <laughs> so it's good, I guess, I would like to be a little bit more professional and do my own designs and PCBs for them. And yeah, and that's the next step, I guess. Maybe modular, because it's cool. <laughs> it's cooler than this. <laughs> I 
see one more question behind you or in front of you too. Okay, so um, I just wanted to ask as a, because you said you really like to perform, so you perform in front of an audience, and as a noise artist, like, do you consider the tolerance level of your audience, or like, how do you <laughs> feel when you're performing? Because, I mean, there were some great moments, but there were some moments when I was like, I actually can't, you know, listen to this, I have to cover my ears, and I wonder if you yeah. consider that no. at all, or like, what... How no, does I don't that really consider. You? Don't really consider the audience, to be honest. Uh, I don't know. If that's that's just honest, really. Obviously, I want to communicate something. It's not that I'm playing for myself, but uh, yeah, it's it's I'm making noise music and it's intense and yeah. If you, I guess I could do easy listening and sing and make more ambient music, but that wouldn't be me. So it's just I'm just being honest, basically, through doing this, I guess. <laughs> There was another question. Wondering, um, uh, in your show now, the lighting uh, played a big role. Um, how do you take into account light and lighting? Do you think mm -hmm. beforehand, um, this is, is it as important as the music, or is it something that comes extra? Yeah, uh, yeah, of course, this is, uh, even in sound, the light influences the sound, and sound influences the light, so it creates some kind of feedback. But it's, uh, it's the whole package of intensity, I guess, um, I think it's it's kind of going to be sometimes overwhelming, and I quite like it. Is yeah. that something you you work at beforehand as well, where you make machines? You yeah, I use I use lights in my machines too, so they have light loops and stuff like that. I think it's quite playful to have those too. I don't know. You're also working with video feedback. I saw some uh, images of you playing mm. with. Uh, is this something you want to integrate in the performance? Or? Uh, that's that's a new thing I did a few days ago for uni. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, again, it's nothing uh, extremely original. I uh, I used a schematic from those guys called Cracked Ray Tube, and they uh, they hacked Cracked Ray Tube TVs. So it's easy accessible. Everyone can build it, and it's I find it interesting because it's Cracked Ray Tube also. Um, and I like cut right tubes. <laughs> How do you see this? Because uh, you mentioned these are old techniques uh, in mm. from the 60s, uh, the feedback principle and also the bending, the circuit bending. How do you see it that there's this whole revival of this this uh, scene and the, mm. uh, uh, this do-it-yourself attitude and uh, uh, but also basically making again those uh, uh, circuits and reusing them? Yeah, you do your own thing in this, but how do you see this? This sort of recycling of mm -hmm. uh, uh, techniques. Yeah. And, um, well, obviously there are reasons why we do it. It's not only you know to make noise and whatever, but you know you, it's, can it's, you it's, name it's, a few of those reasons. Maybe? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to do that. So, um, yeah, I guess it's a conscious decision not to buy equipment that's designed by someone else and you know you can't you can't get those things from anywhere really so um it's kind of yeah idiosyncratic i would say so um yeah kind of i guess independence not relying on other people's machines and yeah i'm not buying i'm gonna make it myself <laughs> is there uh, i see one more question there I'm really dehydrated. Hmm? <laughs> I'm perhaps asking as a grandmother, but is there any way to defend your ears? <laughs> you can uh, leave... Oh, me. For me. Right. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, good question. Probably not. Probably going to be deaf very soon. Well, what can I do? <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Are there more questions? <laughs> well, there will be more of Ewa tonight. More damage to the ears. Uh, tonight uh, in Paradiso, in the small hall. So uh, uh, I, I want to thank Ewa. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for inviting and, uh, me. Thank you. <laughs>